Code 767, reorganized string, um, asked by many companies, top like saying companies especially. Um, question is, given a string S, check if letters can be arranged that so that two characters are adjacent, that are adjacent to each other are not the same. If possible, output any possible result. If not possible, return the empty string. So example A, B, um, outputs A, B, A because we do not want the A's to be adjacent to each other. Example two, A, A, B cannot have a valid output, so we output an empty string, and this is because no matter how you organize it, an A will be adjacent to another A. And so this might seem like kind of a confusing problem, but actually once you notice the pattern, it becomes very simple. Basically, in order to optimize your result, you want to get rid of the letters that appear the most first, right? So for example, in the first example, A appears the most, most, so you get rid of an A first, right? And then you get rid of the next most appearing letter, which is B, so B, and then you get rid of the next most Appearing letter, which is A again, because there's only A left. And if you think about it, this makes sense because if you have like a lot of the same letters, you want to get rid of it first in order to maximize the potential that you won't have an adjacent letter that is hitting each other later on in the string. And whenever you hear the word frequent in coding, immediately in your mind, should be heaps like anything with top k frequency like problems can almost for sure be solved with a heap so that's one programming tip i have given you or like i'll give you um so how to do this problem then well we need to find the frequency of all the letters first and then like we said before we take the most frequent letter put it in our result string right? We pop that most frequent letter out of our max heap. And then next letter should be the next most frequently letter, next, next most frequent letter. So we look at that one, put it that in the string. And then while we do that, we push the most previous frequent letter back in. So why did we pop that out in the first place? Because after you use a letter, you don't want to consider again, consider it again for the next possible character in our result string, because we don't want the same letter to be adjacent and appearing twice together. Got it? So we have a letter that is most frequently appearing, which we have just popped off the heap. We put it at the front, then we put the next most frequent letter next to it. And when we do that, we push the previous letter back onto the heap because now that we have two non-adjacent characters, we want to reconsider that first previous character that we have just popped off. So we want to continuously consider it still. Um, okay, so let's get right into the code. And I'll be programming Python, by the way. Oops. Wait. Um, okay. Honestly, I don't know why that was red right there. But I'll try to make my code very readable. And then you guys, as programming, programming, amazing programmers, can try to, you know, um, simplify it or like decrease it later if you want while you're practicing. But for now, I'll try to make it as readable as possible to, for anyone to understand. So first, I want to build a frequency dictionary, which keeps track of how many occurrences of each character occur in our input string. So we have our frequency dict, and we just count the letters that appear in our original string. And as always, if it's already appeared, we just plus one, otherwise we initialize it to one. Okay, so now that that's done, our next step is a max heap. So we initialize that here. Oh, 
don't forget to import. Oh, I already did. Cool. Okay. Yeah. So don't forget to import that though. Um, not really important for whiteboard interviews to import, but honestly, with COVID and remote interviews, I've noticed a lot. Like a lot of my interviewers have been asking me to run my code. So if it's breaking randomly, it just might be that you have forgot to import something. So we want to add everything to the max heat. So here we'll be looping through the frequency dictionary and pushing the frequency letter onto the max heap. And remember, all heaps are inherently min heaps. So the easy way to fix that and make it a max heap is simply to negate whatever value you're putting in. So that is why I'm entering and pushing in negative frequency. So now we want to initialize our result. And remember in our discussion, we wanted to keep track of the previous letter and previous count because we always want to push it back into the heap after we have considered the next one. So we have previous letter equals none, previous count equals zero. And while there's items in our max heap, we can extract the frequency and letter from like the most frequently appearing, like we can extract the most frequently appearing letter and its frequency from the max heap. And we just want to append it to the result. Okay. And after we repend it, don't forget to decrease the frequency because we have gotten rid of an occurrence of it. And because it's a max heap, we plus one because of our whole opposite negation thing. And then if previous count is not equal to zero, so if there is such a previous character that we have considered earlier and it still has, like it still exists and has a frequency of above or equal to one, we want to be able to put it back into our heap and reconsider it, right? So, um, oh wait, I spelled heap pop wrong. Uh, okay. So then we want to push it back into the heap, basically. Okay. And then we want to set our current one to be the previous. Oops, wait, okay, yeah. Frequency. And then at the end, because our result is an array, we just join it and make it a string. And then at the end, remember there's like cases where there's no valid arrangement. So if the length of our result is not equal to the length of our input, we can just return an empty string. Otherwise, we can return that result. Okay. So let's hope our code compile. Oh, of course, it never does in the beginning. Okay, for letter in this. Um, wait, return, oh, return result. Nice, so at least that test case worked and then when you submit it, it's accepted and honestly, yeah, it works. And I believe the runtime of this is O of n log n, where n is the number of characters in the input string. So yeah, good luck everybody. And you know, give this video a like, subscribe if you want to. Um, also, if anyone actually does watch my video, which I know I'm not like a programming YouTuber or anything, like literally it's my second programming video. Um, I kind of want to know how everyone's recruiting is going. So, you know, leave a comment about your recruiting journey during COVID-19 down below. Um, 
Yeah, okay. Thank you so much. And I'll see you the next time I'm bored at night. <laughs>